All right, the purpose of this video is to uh, work lesson number four, demo four, V4, video four. So uh, let's let's go to um, assignment manager, which is where we were. Uh, actually, now I want to I want to do it this way. Uh, let's let's go to assignments uh, the way you'll see it. And th it's always kind of confusing a little bit from from my perspective, which is an instructor perspective and your uh, perspective. So let's uh, let's work this one. And again, the purpose here is to, to show you how to work some of these uh, problems on my stat lab that deal with sample proportions. I think they're a little bit more complicated than uh, the sample mean problems, primarily because the um, uh, standard error is a little harder to find. So uh, question number one, uh, according to a candy company, packages of a certain candy contain 21% orange candies. <clears throat> now, if you're working on a final exam and you're trying to figure out whether one of these problems um, <clears throat> is, you know, a central limit theorem for sample proportions or a simple uh, uh, central limit theorem for sample means, the way you can determine the difference right off the beginning is when the value for, well, I can't, uh, there we go. Uh, when the value that describes your population is given as a percentage, then you're guaranteed that that's going to be a sample proportion problem. All right, so find the approximate probability that a random sample of 300 candies will contain 24% or more <clears throat> orange candies. All right, so uh, let's see. Uh, so 300, okay. So let's go to, uh, what am I doing? I'm losing my mind here. Uh, so again, I'm having a hard time remembering this. Uh, so 21% is, is mu. Now the standard deviation, what I can do is I can do the square root <clears throat> 0.21 uh times and then i need one minus 0 0.21 so that'd be 0 0.79 and i need that divided by the sample size which was 300 or i can just do that on my calculator and enter the uh, decimal out to about six places all right so we need uh find the approximate probability that uh so 24 percent or more So 0 0.1010 0, if it wants us to round to four places. So it wants us to round to three places. So 0 0.101. All right, next question. The letter Y, or I'm sorry, the letter uh, uh, T makes up an estimated 10% of, uh, of a certain language. Assume this is correct. A random sample of 1,200 letters is um, taken from a randomly selected large book, and the T's are counted. Uh, find the approximate probability that the random sample of 1,200 letters will contain 8.8% or fewer T's. Now, let's identify some things here. First of all, what is our P? Uh, our P is the uh, uh, estimated 10%. So I'm going to write down uh, P equal 0 0.10, uh, my random sample. So N is equal to 1,200. And it looks like we're getting, we want to know about 8.8% or fewer, right? Okay. All right, so this should be pretty straightforward. So uh, the mean is going to be my P. The standard deviation, let me get rid of all that stuff, is going to be the square root of 0 0.10 uh, times 1 minus 0 0.10, which is 0 0.90, uh, divided by the sample size, which is 1,200 words. Uh, we want less than uh, 8. 
0.8%, so I have to put that in as a percentage. And compute. Uh, so less than uh, to the left makes sense. So 0 0.08, 0 0.083, if it wants us to round to three places. <clears throat> All right, uh, according to a law association, approximately 61% of um, uh, people who take the bar to practice uh, law in a region pass the exam. Uh, find the approximate probability that at least 67% of 200 randomly selected uh, will take the bar. Okay, so I need to write this down. So the P is uh, 0.61. My sample size is 200. And I need at least 60%. Uh, I'm sorry, at least 67%. So at least means what? Greater than. Because if you know, someone walks into a classroom and they're at least seven foot tall, that means they're seven foot tall or higher. Uh, so at least means uh, greater than. So again, uh, the mean would be 0.61. I think we can just come in here and put 0 0.61. And one minus 0 0.61 is 0 0.39. And then go here and put in, instead of 1,200, our sample size was what? 200. All right, that should work. And we want uh, at least, which uh, means uh, greater than, and we want uh, 0.67. So 0 0.041 should be the correct answer. All right, uh, I always like these. Uh, these are interesting questions because it uh, it kind of gives you an indication uh, how little hope you have if you have to take an exam where you have to just randomly guess. Uh, so that's kind of the purpose of, uh, of this. These are kind of fun. Uh, so we have a true-false uh, test with 40 questions. And I'm just going to write this stuff down so I have it in front of me when I go over to um, uh, StackCrunch. Uh, passing grade is 69%. Uh, or higher. So what is the probability that a person will guess correctly on one true false? Well, we only have two options and one of them is the correct answer. One of them is not the correct answer. So 0.50 should work. Uh, what is the probability that a person will guess incorrectly on one question? Same thing. 0.50. Now, here's where the fun starts. Uh, find the approximate, approximate uh, probability that a person who is just guessing will pass the test. All right, so we need to go to StackCrunch. So the mean would be P, which is 0 0.50. The standard deviation will be the mean of a success, or I'm sorry, the probability of a success times the probability of a failure, or P times one minus P, uh, over the total sample, what do we have? Um, I forget what the sample size was. Uh, so we have, um, we'll pass the test, so we have 40 questions. And passing the test uh, means 60, 69% uh, or higher. These numbers are running together. Uh, so point, uh, zero, zero, 0.008. In other words, it's not happening. Uh, four places. 
uh, 0 0.0081. All right. If a similar test were given with multiple choice questions with four choices uh, for each question, what would, uh, would the approximate probability of passing the test by guessing be higher or lower than true-false? Well, the probability of a true-false of getting uh, one correct is 0.50. The probability of getting one correct uh, with four choices is only 0.25. So it's going to be lower. Uh, for this reason right here, lower because the probability of guessing correctly on each question is lower, so the cumulative probability would be uh, lower. Again, that's more of a common sense thing than it is actually a um, uh, what I call statistics. So which is the, f uh, the following is not a requirement for the normal distribution, for the binomial distribution. All right, let me explain why uh, we're, we're, we're using something called a binomial distribution. I have just classified this broadly as, as categorical or not categorical. So, but we typically think of uh, the categorical when we're uh, expressing something as the percentage, as the percentage of people who have that particular characteristic. For example, flying, uh, you either had a fear of flying or you don't have a fear of flying. The previous, so you either passed the bar or you didn't pass the bar. You either passed the test or you didn't pass the test. So binomial means two, bi means two, uh, and that means we have two choices for our categorical variable. That's the way, uh, you know, those are uh, measurements are typically um, uh, presented. Now, one more thing. Notice that a lot of textbooks you'll see n times p, where p is the probability of a success. Uh, or probability of uh, fear of flying or whatever it may be. I always report this as n times 1 minus p, but most textbooks will abbreviate 1 minus p as q. So you need that on your radar. This should go on your notes uh, somewhere that n, okay, n times p greater than or equal to 5 and n times 1 minus p greater than or equal to 5, which are the conditions for using the normal approximation for a binomial distribution. Uh, n times q is the same thing as n times 1 minus p. Well, we know that those aren't the right answers because we need both of those. We need n times p to be greater than or equal to 5, and we need n times 1 minus p to be greater than or equal to 5. Uh, the sample is a result of conducting several dependent. Well, that's false because it's not. Uh, we have one random sample of n, and um, so c would be the incorrect answer. We don't take multiple. Uh, uh, several dependent trials. Now, in developing the concept of a central limit theorem, we take you know, we we uh, kind of illustrate that as taking multiple samples of a population. But those are different things. All right, uh, that's it. All right, take care.